All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us as we explore our series, Meetings with Remarkable People. My name is Bria Freeman and I'm excited to explore with you a conversation with some leading edge thinkers in the field of unified physics and sacred geometry, exploring the intersection with modern mysticism, shamanism, and the emerging consciousness of our times. I'll start by introducing our panelists who are each masters in their fields. <clears throat> Marshall, Marshall Lefferts is a founder and director of the Cosmometry Project and author of Cosmometry, Exploring the Hollow Fractal Nature of the Cosmos, a groundbreaking book released this July 2019. He's also a board member and adjunct faculty with the Resonance Science Foundation in collaboration with Nassim Haramain. Marshall also worked as associate producer for Thrive, What on Earth Will It Take? which is the most widely viewed privately funded documentary in the world, available in over 20 languages, and arguably one of the most pivotal consciousness documentaries of our times. Marshall is a lifelong student of nature, cosmic knowledge, as well as a skilled musician. For the past 41 years, he has studied and synthesized a variety of pioneering research, including the work of Buckminster Fuller, David Bohm, Nassim Haramain, Foster Gamble, Richard Merrick, and others, culminating in his book, Cosmometry, which we're pleased to be discussing tonight. Welcome to the call, Marshall. Uh, thank you so much, Bria. Thank you, everybody. Uh, as I'm just so honored to, to be here with you all. So appreciative of your great interest in these subjects and can tell by my, my little bit of looking around at who you are and what you're doing and getting a sense of that, that uh, it's a very rich and deep inquiry you all are, are involved with. And it's just a pleasure to be here and be in that inquiry with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to also introduce Berdania Swami Chera to our call. Berdania is a spiritual teacher, author, and mystic. Her teachings focus on the transformation of consciousness spiritual awakening, awakening which she sees as the next step in human evolution. For the past 30 years, Berdania has been dedicated to the empowerment of the feminine force through an exploration of forgotten sciences such as art, meditation, Ayurveda, and ceremony. Berdania's work allows for communities around the world to engage with Earth's vibrations and supports equality and justice for the re-emerging Earth dimensions and different intra-terrestrial races. Welcome, Berdania. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you for putting together this uh, opportunity for all of us to interact and to learn from each other and to have fun. Finally, I will introduce Matthew Cosgrove. Matthew is an oracle, a mystic, and a seer. His role is to represent and protect the heart of earth, a representation which fills his own heart with a crystal compassion that's deeply transformative to anyone he works with. As a master of the underworld, Matthew also offers openings, journeys, and vision work to help people recognize and transform in their present cycle of evolution. Matthew and Berdania regularly work together facilitating retreats, courses, and profound ceremonies across Canada, online, and internationally. Both teachers are dedicated to animating a living mysticism, which allows different races in form and in non-form to interact in a dynamic exchange of information. Welcome, Matthew. Wow, thanks. <laughs> it's, it sounds really good, <laughs> what I do. <laughs> you do do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited about this because, uh, well, we'll get into it later, but it, it, uh, I, I've been seeing all these, well, like in the book, the cosmometry, uh, different symbols over the years have appeared um, in conjunction with where people are at, you know, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, there's some amazing intersections to explore. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really rich. Yeah, thank you. I'm pleased to say that we're also joined by our Cosmometry Study Group, a dedicated group of seekers from across Canada and the United States. 
Our study group has been led by the trailblazing efforts of Octave La Fortune, who is specialized in facilitating courses in modern science, in modern sciences. Thank you for being with us, Octave. Thanks, Bria. Thanks for hosting this and uh, trailblazing. My goodness, what praise. We have the real trailblazer here in, the, in, in our meeting. But yes, thank you. Thanks for having me. Everybody plays their part. So we have a beautiful group we have here. So I'll just, we'll start the conversation. Marshall, we'd like to start with you. Uh, we found your cosmometry book this summer and it's been found to be one of the most comprehensive, accessible, profound and inspiring um, book that leads, that provides like what's the leading edge ideas of what's being now understood in the field of geometry and unified physics. So you did a, amazing work. Thank uh, you. <laughs> yeah, can you tell us a little bit about how the inspiration for the name of this book came to you and why it's so important for the modern seeker to really understand these fundamental principles in physics, energy, and in the cosmos? Mm, sure, I'd be happy to. Well, the name cosmometry um, is one that, um, well, really, my, my background um, as you mentioned, has deep roots in, in the work of Buckminster Fuller. Uh, Bucky's synergetic geometry really grounded me in, a, in an approach to this field starting from 1978 when I first read his works and began studying his, his work. And um, then over the years, many years, um, I became familiar with what is typically called sacred geometry. And that's a whole field of knowledge and awareness that's very, very uh, popular today and has been for a long time. And, um, and then I also have been uh, immersed in the scientific side of it, and especially working with Ms. Sim Haramain. And I felt inside of myself that there was a bit of a need for a term, a name for this field that uh, would appeal to scientists as well as to the spiritual and mystical side. And sacred geometry is not something scientists are going to say what they are doing, <laughs> for sure. Um, and so I, and I also then, in musing upon that, um, was considering how the word geometry is very much, geo means earth, it's very much a, a system that's based on our experience here on earth. And what Bucky was discovering in the sim and my work with Foster Gamble, who created Thrive. Um, it, it really is showing that these patterns span the full, full expanse of the cosmos from the tiniest scale to the largest scale. So it was cosmic geometry. And I thought of this word cosmometry, which I thought I had made up one night. This is back in around like 2006 or seven. And, uh, Upon doing a, a search on it, I found out that it actually has existed for a few hundred years, but not in, hasn't been in use, really. And so uh, for me, it, it was it, and is the appropriate name for this field of knowledge from a more broad context that includes Buckminster Fuller's work and the scientific understanding, as well as what we typically find in sacred geometry. So that's, that's how the name came about for me. And so I, I really just offer it as uh, uh, a word we can use, a name we can use to have a conversation that really can include all parties in a comfortable way. In terms of the importance of this field of knowledge in the world today, um, for me, I, I feel that, um, well, essentially, uh, the human evolutionary path, I think as we're all very, very much aware of, is really at a threshold of of make it or break it. And uh, the, the challenges and crises we face, the ones that are very much hum human oriented, come from a worldview and very much a scientific worldview that has oriented us towards the idea of separation and domination and control over nature, um, superiority, and really a lack of, of a sensitivity to uh, not only a greater sense of the world and of nature, but even of ourselves in relationship to that. And that for me is at the root of the challenge and the crisis. It's really a crisis of 
our minds and our consciousness. And also then an understanding scientifically um, that is, let's say, maybe more deep and true to the nature of reality than the materialistic and reductionist model. And that has been predominant. And so the, the field of knowledge of cosmometry and of the unified physics, uh, the scientific worldview that is represented from that understanding offers us a, um, a new perspective and really fundamentally a new paradigm because it shifts from the paradigm of separation and disconnection to one of unification and completely connected um, at all scales and in all ways. So it really offers us a, a basis of understanding that is uh, essential in my mind to being able to make this shift that we're in and gives us a, a compass of orientation towards which to do so that is, is coherent and in alignment with what, what I feel and I think the, the science shows us and also understanding Bucky's geometry um, and the, all the aspects as they come together in a wholeness, it, it shows us uh, how, we can re how we can come back into alignment with the cosmos. And because we're obviously very out of alignment and imbalanced now, but we can come back into alignment and harmony with nature and the cosmos by understanding and applying these ideas in, in our technologies, in our social structures, etc. So for me, that's, it's essential that we do so, and this offers some insights into a way that we can approach that. That's beautiful. It really opens it up beyond just like there's the implications for the seeker, and then there's the implications for anybody who's interested in absolutely the evolution of our yeah yeah everybody implications <laughs> for everybody really everybody yeah. it's, a, it's a fundamental shift that. Um, you know, the, the shift will affect everyone no, no matter how it is going to go. And so um, we get to choose how that happens, each of us, and then together. Uh, and um, ideally, we make these choices that are going to bring us in the best and highest and most compassionate and beautiful outcome. Um, and so that's, that ultimately it does affect everyone, either way. <laughs> It's a very, it's a very worthwhile objective for all of us, I think. Absolutely. Um, Avta, can you, so we, we, when we created the study group to, to study your work, um, Octoc was, was in charge of facilitating that for us. And so I'd like to invite him to talk a little bit about the intersection of what we're studying and what we found in your work, in your work. Mm, great. Okay. So our community, the members of the study group, you know, we've been sort of swimming for the past three years and a bit in teachings by our, our teacher, uh, Bergana, who's in this session as well, about subject matter called the structure of being and the structure of belonging. And, you know, the structure of being is really a very personal uh, set of teachings and practices, you know, to help, you know, raise human consciousness as much much as it could but which is great but we've really moved into what we're calling the structure of belonging now which is really moved us into the impersonal realm so you know harbor it raising consciousness uh synchronizing consciousness with the group the planet you know the environment and it's been really it's been really good it links quite well with your book um so just like a quick little background, my, my day job, I'm a computer engineer. So I've always thought in, you know, mathematical ways, right? And there's, throughout the teachings of our, of our teacher, there's been always a few key paragraphs and senses here and that I'm like, man, that really sounds like sacred geometry, mm. you know? And you know, I'm gonna like pick one, just, just a really quick one, just to give you an example. So this is a quick little clip, clip from a document and, and, it's, and it goes, um, you know, essence is like a tongue and it looks like a pyramid. It is up and in at the same time. 
it is the center, the point that the structure of the source is based on and from where it is balanced. All other structures are based on this. When I heard that, I'm like, is she talking about a tetrahedron? Is that what she's talking about? So uh, yeah, I mean, we've got documentation and there's endless correlations that can be drawn, but I want to give you that one. That really, I think that one really screams. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I guess I could say that, you know, these teachings for the past three years sync up super well with like the big three sacred geometry. So the tetrahedron, the, you know, the vector equilibrium and the IVM and, you know, their resulting dynamics, right? And the torus and all of its features and all of its behaviors, they mimic quite wonderfully the teachings we've been exploring for the past three years. So mm. it's deep and it's, it's vast and, you know, obviously like I can't cover any degree of detail in these mm -hmm. two sentences that I have, but it's there, man. And it's awesome. Mm. Thank you. That's uh, it's so exciting to hear that. And it's so affirming for me to get the reflection back uh, from the perspective that you all are immersed in and the correlations being um, true and, and universal. And that's what I get from what I hear, you know, that we're really all um, tapping into the same field of conscious awareness. And so whichever way we are, you know, whichever lens we're looking at it through our path, we're exploring it or language we're using, it's all, we're all looking at the same thing because there's really only one thing going on here. <laughs> yeah, one thing. Love to hear that reflection, yeah. Fernando, would you like to expand on that a little bit, the correlation between the cosmometry work and your teachings? We, we need to see that each individual is um, positioned in a space in different points. So therefore each individual has a particular resources, particular point of view that aid the theme of development that that particular individual have chosen. So by us uniting the different perspective, this person see it from this perspective, the other one from another perspective, for the time frame that we are looking at the same thing, we are energizing a, a field or a, um, a dimension. And we enter in that dimension. And by entering into that dimension, we are locating ourselves in a earth that is parallel to what we, all the observers, wish to lift. What is that we are um, directing the one thing through us embodying that, we are actually animating a dimension that is unique to the viewers. So the more individuals or souls or, or um, parts of us, whatever you want to have it, mm -hmm. look at one thing at this moment, which is the understanding of a reality that is in great dynamic. We are contributing to an evolution but it's a different evolution than we think because it's not, it's not that we are changing the earth. It's actually we are abandoning the earth that we did conceive it. And we are entering into a new dimension where the earth actually exists formed by the different people that are looking at one single same thing, but with different perspective. So it is like a, a, an a sphere that is being look at different points and when the sphere is totally covered, then it gets animated because mm -hmm. it has a purpose. 
because it has a, 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 a heartbeat. So the science expressed to us the understanding of reality, where another point is to infuse that understanding with the actual energy of us living that and mm. being that. So it's not enough to understand it. It's necessary to embody it by, on, by creating that connectability. So meetings like this immediately create us an energy that is a stain, a, saying a statement that we're looking at the thing, we're getting it together, looking at one thing, and that we're animating it right now. Mm. So it is something that, that is not, first of all, it's not enough to understand it. We need to tap into the fact that we are creators and that we are creating something just by observing. From our point of view, so you don't need to get all the, you know, you know I don't wanna uh, be a physic, but you need to be you in order to download you into that field that we are creating right now. Mm. Therefore, the earth that we wish to be or lived can be animated. Otherwise, it's like a relationship, you know, that it's, everybody say, oh, we need to change earth. And I would say, well, no, really, you cannot change anybody. You cannot change a person. You cannot change yeah. earth. You cannot change anything. All what you can do is to change the dimension that you choose to live as a parallel reality and embody that and gather all the souls that vibrate with that particular um, preference. So when we, that's why they, we get this, this meeting together and say, okay, how cosme cosmetry see it, how biology see it, how music see it. And that's what is the whole program of meeting with the remarkable people where we are all seeing the same thing, but we are actually energizing a dimension that we yeah. are all choosing to prefer to live on it. This makes sense? Yes, beautifully said. I love that. Uh, it makes me just feel so good to, to, to take that in and reflect that I, you know, I fully feel that in myself that, you know, the, the, the scientific and um, intellectual aspect gives us a, a window into this one thing. And, and that's very important and very valuable, especially because our, our wonderful minds with all their great capacity can also be very confused when they don't understand the, uh, the, uh, the experience of our spiritual being like the we have that more intuitive direct knowing side of it ourselves and yet we haven't had a, a model that's been congruent with that from a scientific and logical and intellectual rational perspective and so um, having that enables us to integrate that part of ourselves in with the the aspects that are whole and in that embodied sense and, and intuitive knowing. And so, um, so I, I feel like there's a, that's part of the reintegration process, which for me speaks to this, um, this aspect, as you're saying, of really it's about each of us coming into our embodiment and coming into coherence and integration in our whole beings. And, and then, in seeing that same thing, like you said, to come together and from each of our lenses and each of our perspectives into this beautiful hologram that is our shared experience here, to, uh, to be able to affirm that together. And in so doing, 
uh, bring into bring in incarnate the 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 new world, the new earth, as we share that understanding uh, into this reality. And it's a process. It's actually it's a it's a necessary process of um, visionary and practical understanding coming together. And uh, I really feel what you're saying is exactly what is is going on and what's needed and um, how that permeates into the collective field of human consciousness. Well, it starts right here <laughs> by being together in this way and having these conversations and um, being able to share them um, as you all are and being able to bring greater and greater clarity to what is that shared perspective of this one unified um, understanding and uh, and then celebrate the diversity of the perspectives like you said through the music and the arts and the science and the, the consciousness um, modalities that we can use to help us embody it more fully but yeah. really the embodiment is the key I agree with you yeah and when, with the understanding that that as we we become what we see and that the only change that um, we are able to really do is to not only observe the, the obs what is observed it becomes us mm -hmm. and with that then the the embodiment happens when you call different lights or matching frequencies that will say mm -hmm. that agree for the time being it could be just a couple of moments to animate a field that is uh, clear that we want to become one in a very um in the exchange but it's not the exchange of, it's, it's actually related to resonance, the exchange of our voice mm -hmm. is the exchange of our vibration that we have created at this moment, a cloud, if I can put it that way, mm -hmm. where we are magnetizing um, a feel of diversity where nobody is fighting with anybody and that the agreement is taken for granted mm. that we don't need to discuss what you think and what i think is about what we need as what is your contribution to the dimension that we want to inhabit and in that simplicity then we become and we need to separate a little bit of the concreteness because it's, it's not, again, it's not about changing the world. It's not about changing mm -hmm. earth. You know, earth is fine. Mm -hmm. And what, what we are not is enough agile to uh, move at the speed that she's moving. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, I really feel it's a, it's a change from within and um, the, the human experience is one aspect of the totality of the experience of this earth. And um, I, I love your mentioning of the relationship of all, of, of all beings, intraterrestrial beings that are in form and not in form. And, and we are one of those and we have our particular perspective and we are highly uh, impacting the, the experience of this earth. And I, I fully agree that it's not about saving the earth or changing the earth. It's, it's, it's an inner um, orientation and making a shift towards uh, really that which ultimately we can all agree upon, which transcends 
our individual identities and uh, as a transpersonal sense of self and awareness that is you know it's um, I like to refer to it as normalizing cosmic consciousness I feel like that is what is inherent in this shift is um, the the collective experience of of seeing the same thing not just the same thing on tv <laughs> or in the news or in the world the human world but the really our our sense of our our cosmic origin which is not some far out abstract thing it's actually you know our true nature and it's it's simple like you said and uh so when we can see that simplicity and come to a shared sense of sense of that knowing then we can choose and make the shifts in ourselves and with each other and in this world that will um, allow the evolution to be um, well i don't know if the best word is successful either way it will be it will succeed um, and yet dynamic. from our experience <laughs> dynamic just dynamic to make yeah, it yeah, right. dynamic alive yeah. understood uh, uh, to yeah. participate fully with what we have what we're built for and to put our perspective in an expression that is concrete and and that make us excited about our life and the life we yeah. want to live and and where we want to be directed and that see that the power of our own creator uh, within is mm -hmm. constructing earth or not earth it doesn't matter where we are yeah uh, is 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 how we inhabit this space that we are given and that that uh, attract naturally matching frequencies that it will be spinning through through the emptiness and in in a playful way so we can continue learning mm. I love that in a playful way. I, I always feel that is the the essence. Really, it's the essence. Of the, the the what I call the joy body is, is the essence of who we are, and that joy and love are, the dual expression of the same fundamental dynamic, and the balance of the two coming together is where we come into our wholeness. And so, the, it's very important to be in the playful relationship with this, and not be too attached and too serious to either the process or the outcome. <laughs> uh, Matthew, could I invite you um, and to speak a little bit about your work as a seer and how this cosmic geometry has appeared to you or how, how you, what your angle is on it? Uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah I'm, I've been following the, the uh, the conversation here it's very interesting about like in my book the artisans of the new earth <clears throat> the um the the new earth is already existing and it's 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 in a different frequency it's 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 uh it, it's uh it's like a parallel world that we that, that we already live in most of the time um much and much of our work for Dania and me is is to um, is to get people to um, is, is to is to teach people that they have the freedom to go there themselves um, you now I've been doing this work like thirty five years and <clears throat> I, I, um, I use <clears throat> I use the uh, I don't know it's a tool I call the archetypal mind. It has absolutely nothing to do with psychology. <laughs> um, it's a, it's 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 a higher mind. It it comes out of the void, out of the darkness. What I call the black light, and I've I've since discovered a shaman. I've always called it the black light. It comes from the emptiness it comes from the hollowness that 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 is all around us like we're mostly just empty space which is charged with tremendous power yeah. and the black light 
and the archetypal mind comes directly from there. So when, when, I, when I go into the, the presence, which I call it, which is the first tool I, I call, is the presence. It's to make yourself still um, and to tune into the vibration. It happens through the heart. It doesn't happen through the head. Mm -hmm. It happens through the heart. And, so, and our work has been to bring people to the heart in order to be able to access, access that themselves and raise their frequency, because it doesn't happen through the head. For example, uh, earlier on, we, we worked with the Star of David, which is two parts. It's got the, um, the upper triangle and the lower triangle. Mm -hmm. The upper triangle, which is where it's, it's people that are sky. They're, they tend to be... Uh, very much in the head <laughs> and the lower people have lost touch with the magic of sky they, mm -hmm. they're, they're more into the density it's people in, in the south the, the north is more the sky people anyway so uh, our work earlier on is, is the star of david is is to connect the sky with the earth and um so the, this these these shapes would just appear these, these, this would, would just appear where I'd see, I'd see the Star of David, but the, the, they weren't joined, you know? Yeah. Or I'd see, I'd see the person, I, I called it the horizontal man, <laughs> or even inverted man where their, their head is like <laughs> down. It's a metaphor, but it's, but it's not. It's an actual position. Same as, as the alignment of the heart. It's a metaphor, but it's not. It's an actual, that's, that's our like, um, it's the biggest magnetic field in our mm -hmm. body. That's what connects us to the source. And so as, as we worked with the Star of David and, and uh, people would, would start to shed their limiting belief systems, the, the, star, the star of David would unite. And then the heart, the heart would appear in the center. Um, and when that happened, it was um, another shape suddenly appeared out of out of the darkness. It was a sphere. It was a sphere of. Uh, mm. It's like the the person becomes a unit somehow connected with the source, and then that evolved to what we call the body of belonging, which is a sphere, but it's it's got it's faceted. I don't know, there's probably a name, a name for it, I don't know, but, and it's composed of all these very steep pyramids inside it. Mm. And it, these shapes just appear alongside mm. the, the person's development. You see, it goes, it's a total parallel. Because I have no training in science or mathematics. Uh, I, mm. often, I have no clue what I'm seeing initially, but then it all, it all starts to make sense. But the, the body of belonging or this, the, the, this sphere, something unique to it i've i've always remarked it it exists in a place that doesn't exist like it's it's everywhere all it's everywhere so it's it's nowhere mm. it, it's 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 like that hologram you know that it's it's mm -hmm. here but it's everywhere all at once yeah. so it it exists but it's in a place that doesn't exist it's outside of totally outside of time and space you know, just like, just like the parallel Earth is, just like past and future, is, it all it's all existing right here, right now. Um, yeah, and so and there's been other other um, uh, geometries and images have come. This, the the cross, such an ancient ancient symbol. You know, just the the basic cross. Mm -hmm. And the alignment of the two, again, that it, it lines up with the heart. When a person, when mm -hmm. the cross is too low or it's, it's too high, the person's too, too much in the head or too, too much stuck in the lower, lower areas, then it, it doesn't meet in the heart. Anyway, th these are just a few of, the, uh, of uh, the images that have come over the years. Mm -hmm. 
you see and, parallels with your work, Marshall? Oh, go ahead, Bernania. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to underline uh, with Matthew comments about that the geometry is very much formed out of the perception of the of, of the individual, the position that it takes in the observation of itself. So it it through our years of work and in the community is to build your structure by changing the perception that you have about yourself. And you have experienced that, that the, as you get more geometrically um, sophisticated, you are able to handle higher levels of impact of energy in different dimensions. So the work as we become in our structure, the, the the sacred geometry or the complexity of, of the source, we are able to travel much more um, in cohesiveness to time and, uh, and time and not time, space and not space, mm. to travel through the form and the non-form because it it is it, is a it's a matter of of um, if you don't have the structure, you cannot travel. And the density very much relate to the belief system, to the, to the limiting belief systems that we adopt and that each belief system is addressing the three powers of wisdom, love, and alchemy. And as you deform that, then the sacred geometry cannot happen because this is by the union of these three units that the interaction of this unit that the sacred geometry appears or disappears. So we should not say that sacred geometry, oh, the form is there and is forever there. It's a, no, it's a living thing that is us and that we have complete uh, power of creating it, moving it in the dimension we want, depending of the belief system we choose to live or the, the one that we are preferring to express. So it's, it's very much in congruence that is not something, okay, that's how reality works out there, is that reality is me and I have a complete, complete, complete control over mm -hmm. my structure. And that depending on where my structure is or what is the shape of my structure, I will be located in a dimension, in a scale, a small scale, bigger scale, medium scale, and the bigger the scale, you're able to process the different non-time, the non-space, all, all the multiple types of gravities, the multiple types of plasmic influx, everything, it gets much more potent and you are able to manage it. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's just, this, the source is too powerful, it shed you around. Mm -hmm. So what the source wants is that you mimic the source, mm -hmm. that you mimic itself at all times. So it puts you in this shape-shifting geometrical uh, uh, thing that eventually you will become it. And when you're it, you are just a shape-shifting, dynamic, um, flowing, playful, joyful, loving, molecule, mm -hmm. little thing in the great ocean of the now. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's very much related to perspective. Mm -hmm. Marshall, would you like to comment on that? Are you see the parallels with your own work? That's, that's uh, so, so rich and deep, all that's been said. Um, and uh, Matthew, thank you for sharing some of those visions you have and your, your, your sense of them. Um, and in reflecting on some of those aspects, um, you know, the... In, in the model of, of that I have in cosmometry, um, 
really you can say that everything that we have as an experience our experiential relationship whether it's physical or metaphysical is is ultimately one of relationships in order to have an experience we have to have a sense of self and something else and relationships are all geometric really you know that's it's a dynamic occurring that is constantly shifting and um shape-shifting as Bardania just said and uh comes into form in different ways of different um different aspects of coherence you know in different scales and different geometries and um the most fundamental aspect of that is the triangle and in space spatial relationships the tetrahedron and uh so that's the like the, the super most simple place of the origin of what then complexify comp complexifies into greater uh expressions of of form and and existence and perception and uh and then the sort of the the balancing uh geometric relationship to that simplicity is when that complexifies complex <laughs> funny i say that both times complexifies as in its other aspect of coherent wholeness as a sphere and um now the the beauty of what you were seeing there matthew with the sphere that is it's it's actually faceted you said and uh this is one of the great discoveries of buck mr fuller is that when he then invented as a geodesic dome, which is really that all spherical systems are faceted systems. Um, e you know, even the most perfect, beautiful, smooth, seemingly, you know, perfectly polished crystal sphere is actually made of a, of a crystalline system that is all triangulated and has triangulated relationships all throughout it and um and the protons that make up everything in the universe the proton is at the nucleus of all the atoms and um in the unified physics model they're made up of they're basically just uh swirling vortices of the the field of space which is at the at the smaller scale the planck scale is organized in the exact kind of arrangement matthew that you are envisioning there with that triangulated star of david and uh tetrahedral geometry so that's like seeing the most fundamental balance as this at the source which then comes into that that dynamic that um that uh the the uh, organizing expression of something being localized and uh, the protons are really a swirling of that Planck field into a higher level complexity organization in a spherical system uh, that is completely unified throughout the entire cosmos. And so every proton, as, as Nassim has been showing in his physics, is connected to every other proton, all the relationships. And this is where the, the, the understanding that there are local expressions within a non-local field, and all those local expressions are actually intimately connected in the non-local field. And so, as Matthew was saying, there is both like that that um archetype of consciousness i, I don't know if the, exactly the term you used but uh that archetypal mind is is that universal non-local mind that is the source of any local expression uh and that is the same thing happening in the physical universe where the protons are doing the same thing and in the non-physical universe uh, of our minds and feelings, our hearts, where we are really coming to understand that um, we are not limited in this 
human experience. Uh, we can get distracted by it and get a feeling like, oh, that's sort of who we are and the limits of our sense of self. And yet, um, when we realize we're made physically of, of these entities that are completely coherently interconnected, entangled across the entire universal structure with a holographic information flow moving through the entire thing. And that is at the foundation of our physical beings. And uh, as for Daniel, you were saying that complexity increases to where we, we enter a new dimension of perception that is um, in, intimately related to our biological system as a human being, which is then completely informed by that underlying field that is universally entangled. And so now we have not only uh, a, a uh, metaphysical and mystical perception of that unification, but a physical realization that it's exactly the same thing and and really ultimately how could it be otherwise and um and the beauty of understanding the 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 nature of protons i, I just this when i understood this for the first time i was like wow that is right there something we should all really pay attention to is that protons don't decay as atoms and molecules will do. They'll transform and decay, but protons are not known to decay. And that is the, the origin of all matter in the universe. Therefore, it means that the very foundation of the universe, the earth, ourselves, is eternal abundance. And you know, that in itself is so important to really take in uh, fully um, and you know, as we struggle with on this planet with some of the challenges of, of, of the perceived limitations, when we actually start to orient from that perspective and inform ourselves, uh, you know, towards what, uh, what we can make real, to realize, to bring into this world from that perspective, boy, it just changes the foundation of it all. And is, like you're saying, like a parallel universe that, you know, I, I kind of think it's only parallel because we, you know, we as a human species, well, you know, we're, yeah, it's like there's a veil, you know, there's a veil of perception. And once you see through that veil, as you all are clearly very much exploring and, and in relationship with, you know, then we see that what is the human condition here is very much an illusion. It's contrived. It's, it's not reality. And that the, the, that archetypal mind that is beyond a local sense of a, a psyche, uh, you know, is the source of, of our perception. And when we let ourselves go there in that, you know, beautiful, gentle, surrendering way, um, then we can orient ourselves together into bringing that expression, bringing that realization into this world. And, um, you know, and the, and the beautiful thing is that the, the science is oriented, is congruent with that idea, and it's actually supporting it. And, and then by understanding that and applying it, we can not only with our consciousness and our hearts bring that into embodiment, but make the very important shift we need to make in our technologies and our social systems and all that uh, so that it can become a beautiful faceted integrated spherical whole <laughs> mm -hmm. well thanks for that it's a, mm -hmm. it's, a, a it's kind of a confirmation for me i've been <clears throat> all these years in my cave <laughs> and, mm -hmm. <laughs> And then I realized, well, I'm part, what I've been, the work we've been doing, it's, it's part of a much bigger picture and it's all the same thing, you know. It's not, it's not really isolated. And uh, yeah, thanks for that. It's, it's a big help. Uh -huh. um, I'm glad. I, I, I've been in a cave a long time myself. <laughs> it's like, by putting this book out, I'm stepping out of the cave. <laughs> yeah. and it, it's good and it, and it's you know 
the beauty of that is to be able to have these kinds of conversations and share in these good feelings that are uh, uh, present. It's, could you, a lot of a lot of our work or my work is that I work with music. It's the it's called, well, we call it it's the power song. It's the shaman song. And I work with the drum, the voice, and when we get when we work with the client, we get them to make a sound, any kind of sound, just a vibration. And we get their essence, you know. And with that with that sound, we can craft. We 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 and with the drum and the we can journey. But it all has to do with sound vibration. It's that also seems to coincide with uh, different geometries. It's the sound itself. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. It's a, for me, it's a, it's a passport for travel. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and the, the one's power song is, is the signature in the invisible. Once, once I open it, it's like the, these whole worlds open. It's, I, I, I just wondered how, you being a musician, how you experience that, like. Mm. Uh, yeah, um, the yeah, it's sound, um, the way I understand the, the, the relationship of sound to this universal wholeness is that, um, as I, I say in the beginning of the book, there's, there's the field of light, electromagnetism, is the visible light we see, and the vast range of that we don't see that permeates the entire cosmos. There's nowhere where there is not that happening. There's nowhere there is not light, even though it may look dark. Um, that, like Verdania was saying, is only due to our angle of perception into that field. Um, yet there's light present everywhere, electromagnetism. And that within that universal field and the, the dynamics of that field are uh, radiation and gravitation. So that which uh, outwardly expresses and um, dissolves or dis disseminates and that which at attracts or comes into uh, a, a compression as it comes into form through gravitation. And that compressive aspect, both of those aspects actually, are attributes of the acoustic nature, the sound aspect. And so um, really the, the sound is pressure waves moving through a medium. And so in our experience is through the medium of air and it's compressing and moving through and it is what we experience and hear and can feel in our bodies. And that same dynamic is happening throughout the cosmos, pressure through a electromagnetic medium that creates all form. And so I say in the book that all form, all physical form in the, in the universe is an acoustic phenomenon. And therefore, it's the same thing as sound. And therefore, all the geometry, the crystallization that happens in in, in um crystalline and metallic structures and the organic form and the water and the gases and everything are all acoustic attributes. And therefore, uh, sound is fundamentally um, one of the most powerful forces we have as an ally in our journey here <laughs> because it it directly impacts the form you know so when you're using a drum and using your voice or having somebody use their voice and making a sound and expressing it's it's um it's literally activating that force that is already um occurring in our in our bodies and in our consciousness um, as a matter of fact, our, our body's nervous systems have they've recently come to, to understand more. It's not just electrical impulses, but it's acoustic impulses that travel through 
very mechanical pressure impulses that actually uh, can permeate the whole body simultaneously rather than just following the electrical circuits that move through in the nervous system. It actually can permeate the entire body simultaneously. And so by, by using sound in our practices like you described, we're, we're actually communicating simultaneously in the totality of our being at this very fundamental essential level of the, the, the nature of the universe that creates the dynamic, as Virginia was saying, that which is a dynamic that comes into expression. Um, really fundamentally, it's an acoustic expression uh, in a field of light. <laughs> and it's, in some ways, it's as simple as that. And, uh, and in that simplicity is a lot of a lot of joy, a lot of play, a lot of beauty, and and as the the ability to to heal and restore based on that understanding of the resonance and the harmonization that is the music. So yeah, and and also if I can add to that that um, sometimes, as you say, the the sound may not be heard with the ears, and that they are um, the more powerful sound that the feel understand is the resonance of our action because when we have we, when we have an expression that expression have a voice in the field and that is start making cohesiveness and form that's why it's so important that at this time, we, are, we cannot afford to be uh, not expressive. We need to come mm -hmm. forward with what passionate us, with what we're meant to do, even if it's a small thing, but the expression is, is the voice of our heart. Mm -hmm that it's expressing the love, the, the, the passion that the feel need in order to complete certain dimension. So when we are too much in the cave or too much with our limiting belief systems, we are depriving the universe from our sound. Mm that is through the voice or through the expression or through the connectability but when we locate ourselves as a creator then we have the obligation and responsibility to contribute um, with the song so it can be sectorized for a healing session or something but your whole life is a healing session your whole, your whole expression, whatever you choose to express, is the song that is forming uh, a dimension, a scale, um, a quadrant, a constellation. So you're saying it's not just about everybody going out and getting some gongs and crystal bowls, that, that everything we do has a resonance. It doesn't That's matter right. what it is. That's right. Yeah. You talk about that as well in your book, Marshall. You, you have a quote talking about joy being the outward flow of energy and love being the inward flow. And then the, the peace being, that, that the peace and the stillness being the balancing point between these opposites. Can you give a little comment as well on your own, um, how you see your own expression or how you see the natural urge to express from coming from your own like research and the work you've done? Mm. Yeah, so there's so many ways of, of expressing. <laughs> and uh, I, I wanted to acknowledge that beautiful poetry of your expression, Vidanya, about that, that relationship to sound and resonance and uh, not, only, not only in the range that we can hear um, and not only in the range that we can see. As a matter of fact, uh, the vast, 
nature of reality is beyond our hearing and seeing. And, um, and so um, there's so much more available to us than we give ourselves credit for, let's maybe say. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and so I, I think it's really, I, I love that, that um, statement about really participating and um, you know, I, I have kept myself in obscurity up until this point in my life. <laughs> and uh, I have been on this journey a long time and I've, I've been involved in many great projects and worked with wonderful people uh, for you know, a couple of decades, most actively now and a couple of decades before that, just trying to figure out what the heck am I doing and what is my expression? And, um, and it's, it's very important now to um, bring our expression into the world and allow ourselves to um, share our voice and share our thoughts and share our hearts. And um, so that it can permeate, you know, literally permeate the physical reality which is a very permeable reality. It may seem, appear very solid <laughs> and very hard to penetrate something, but that is the beauty of sound, is that it can actually penetrate much more so than light, and even though everything is made of light. So light is already penetrating <laughs> the, all the matter. And sound, yet yeah, it can really penetrate and, um, and again, sound isn't just what we make through our voices or our instruments. It's actually very much related to our, our field. Um, and so, yeah, coming into the expression is, is really key. For, for me, um, I, I thank you for, I love that you, that you referenced that wonderful little quote that actually, goes way back in my life to right after I had my frying pan over the head spiritual awakening in, in my first year of college. And um, <clears throat> uh, it really came from first understanding Buckminster Fuller's statement that what he says, love is metaphysical gravity. So that the physics of gravity is the, the physics, physical expression of that which unifies and attracts and binds together in wholeness and love is our experience of that. And, and then I felt like, well, there's a complement to that, which is the radiant side of it, which is the joy. And uh, so I said, joy is metaphysical levity. Um, and uh, ultimately then saw that relationship that you, that you ref referenced in that, that little statement there. And the balance of the two is, is so key. And I have long been sort of an advocate in, in my worldview is that, um, you know, there's always room for more love in this world, but what's really, really lacking is more joy. And that, um, you know, without the joy, people can still be in love and go to war. And, when the joy is present, you're not very likely to go to war. It's, it's hard to get into a real aggressive fighting mode when you're in joy. And yet when you're in love, it still can happen. And so to me, there's an essential balance um, that is required in order to, to go through this transition. And that, that when they come together, that is the true nature of compassion. And so, in terms of an expression, however we can express ourselves to bring that joy into the world, to bring an experience of joy to those who we are uh, in relationship with in every moment. It's always here right now. And really I feel it's the true nature of our being. Bliss, you know, bliss and ecstasy. When you get past all of your personality ideas and your, your ideas and thoughts of stuff that happened in life that makes you something other than that <laughs> when you get transcend that into that that uh, non-local state of self-awareness what's left really 
is this beautiful bliss and joy and love and compassion and peace and truth and, and honesty. Um, and so, yeah, the, however, through, through music and dance, through science, through, through um, spiritual, through shamanic work, through um, business, a, any and every aspect of our expressions um, informed by that. It's, and it's very essential and simple and yet that's where the profound um, capacity of it arises from. So that's beautiful. I, I will share that right now. <laughs> Matthew, would you like to comment? Um, yeah, the joy, I, I can relate to that. The joy, the joy seems to be when we're following our passion. It's, it's our natural state. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's true that you can't, I guess you can't go to war if you, if you have joy. <laughs> yeah. It seems to be the case. <laughs> yeah. And I guess some people who go to war find joy in it, but maybe they don't have the love. You know, maybe that's what they're lacking. You know, so could go either way, possibly. Do we have time for one more question before we go to... So I have a question from the study group, and it's about creativity. Where it's does what? The, it's about creativity. Okay. So the question is, where does the impulse to create come from? What is it that decides if something will be a planet, a person, or a cloud? Is it all pre-contained in the vector equilibrium of origin from which everything keeps fractally reproducing itself? So the impulse toward creativity or the, or the information. Oh, we lost Marshall. They said they're having a storm. Yeah, we'll give them a moment. Rodania, would you like to speak? Well, creativity is a faculty of the heart. And creativity is, is the very nature of the creator. So since we are the creator, it comes from the creator and is constantly forming us. So it's not like where it comes from, it comes from the attribute, divine attribute of creating because we are the creator. So it's, it's not, it's, it's like a flow or a current that hits you when you are in your heart. Like otherwise if you start constructing with your head or you start uh, analyzing how 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 you should go about your life you want to be creative but creating is very much with the inspiration that you have every day if you create from that place then everything is fine and everything start to synchronize and that synchronicity you start getting the geometrical form of your life that you start inhabiting so it's related with the, uh, with the power of alchemy. It comes from the alchemy, but it's also the, the electrical plasmic impulse of the heart to express divinity. And the expression of divinity is, is the play. You know, you were, you were early talking about joy, but joy without expressing is, is, not, is not possible. The only way to fulfill yourself is by following the passion because the end is in the passion that you have the creativity the focus the direction the guidance the stimulation the development the, the transitions everything is in there so you are actually wired and designed to um, be creator be the creator and when we respond to that then we take responsibility, right? So, so it's, we cannot say that love and joy, you can have love and you cannot have joy. 
No, that's not the case. If you have joy, you have love. If you have love, you have joy because it's one single unit. If it's separated, okay, I can feel joyful because on earth I have certain things that, um, that are convenient for me or feels good to me, then that's a kind of joy. That's a kind of love. That's a kind of um, understanding. But the true nature have no difference. When you have the joy, you have the love, you have the peace, you have the integrity, you have the power, you have the creativity, you have everything that the divine source attributes are composed from. Is, is one single thing as well in the sense of feeling it, knowing it, um, and creating it, expressing it. There's only one thing divided in three powers, the power of, of wisdom, the power of love, the power of creativity. But it's, it's, it comes from one single thing. You, you, the, accordingly to what you're built, then you will have a preference of have more wisdom or more love or more creativity. But it's all sealed in one single sphere. We are in a sphere. So it, to, to try to discern that joy is different than love or love is different than the creativity. No, it's just one single unit. Mm -hmm. You have it or you don't, that's it. There's, <laughs> not, there's no division in, in, from the source to, to when, it, when it comes to where creativity comes from or what love comes from or joy. It is. So one single unit. You got it or you don't. You're back, Marshall. I'm back. Yeah, power dropped for just a moment again. Okay. But it came back on and took a little, a little while to the internet to reconnect. It's okay. I'd like to give the opportunity for to a few people in our study group to talk about the impact of the book. On I would love that. So, um, can we start with Rajem? Rajem, are you in the line? Can you open your camera? Maybe I'll do it for you. There she is. Sorry, I'm being slow. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it's so lovely to meet you, Marshall. Um, and it's um, just beautiful to sit back and hear the conversation among all of you tonight. Um, uh, what this book has meant for me is that uh, it, it really opened up a whole new way for me to um, uh, understand the the teachings, the spiritual teachings that um, uh, I've been studying uh, with Berdania, with Matthew, with this community for, for several decades. Um, and it really blew me away how the sciences that you've laid out um, support and align all the invisible structures that we've been studying um, through the more mystic sciences, if you could put it that way. And what started to happen to me is now every morning in my, um, my meditations is I see these structures and it's, uh, I mean, I, they hit me more in my meditations, but it's like I, it's like I've started to see how all these building blocks uh, appear just everywhere and in places that I would never have seen uh, before. And uh, I'm also finding that I'm aware of, of more links um, between just different concepts, different ideas than I had before. So 
And I mean, it's, I'm so grateful for Octoc because uh, to delve into this book um, without his guidance uh, to understand it and to kind of get my brain up to speed on, on, on sciences that I studied decades ago um, uh, would have been an unsurmountable task. But uh, Marshall, I just really want to thank you for um, sharing all of your uh, collective, uh, probably lifetime collection of, of your passion. Um, it's been really beautiful to have that intersect with our passion here. So thank you. Oh, my great pleasure. Thank you for reflecting that. And, you know, uh, for me, it's, it's very, very much the same in that I'm actually not really that technical a person. It may not look that way to some people in my book, <laughs> but compared to the people I work with, uh, you know, who are very technical scientists, um, engineers, uh, I'm not as much. I'm more on the artist side than I am on the scientist side, ultimately. Uh, so my quest has been to be able to convey what I understand of the science that all fits in beautifully with the what we might call the more artistic side of the geometry and the patterns you know that um, we can see without having to intellectually understand and get something from it and like you're, you're saying to be able to see these patterns in meditation more so and the 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 links and for me that's always been my quest is to be able to to take my perception of this interlinked wholeness and communicate it in a way that has always been the way I can make sense of it and hopefully that others can gain from that as well. So I, I appreciate that's your experience and it means a lot to me to hear that. Thank you. Aaron, are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Can you, share, can you share your experience with the book? Oh, in the beginning it was somewhat difficult to get in, but uh, once it's done, it's uh, it's enriching. It's uh, it's it brings a new uh, how would I say that? It brings it, but it we study it, and uh, now it's after after we we all went through each chapter. It's like everything adds together. And then it becomes complete. And then the reflection continues. Where it brought me is that, in the first is that, maybe because it's in my field, uh, like, is it aging or getting old? Is it a kind of way the Fibonacci uh, number or the uh, fee, a proper, fee proportion between each of the center and the vortexes? Does it get displaced? And by the meditation, we just and the breathing, we're just bringing it back in a kind of health in that. And then after that, it brought me to the uh, maybe time is not it doesn't exist. Aging is not there. It's more what uh, what uh, you talk in your book, Marshall. It's the kind of entropy. It's just, it's just, it's uh, all the uh, but they, we lose energy to everything that is around us. We gain energy so that there are constant change. So we are all in contact with everything around. And then the next question that comes is, uh, like Brad uh, uh told, is, okay, what is my relationship to essence? What is my relationship to the, the source? Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, and uh, it's not, clear and but it's more like okay it's your enrichment it's like enrichment of the source by what i'm receiving what i'm giving which seems to be the uh, uh what i received from the book and also all the teaching from Bedania matthew and now the teaching from everybody in the group too it's mm. just that thank you <laughs> mm -hmm. beautiful thank you for sharing that that's uh that very much, you know, the the essence of our 
experience as human beings is very much tied into the kind of the notion of time <laughs> and evolution and aging and yet that's just a relative experience and so um i love hearing that that's a reflection of your experience by understanding some of the science and the patterns and then seeing that there's something even more essential uh, which i know that you all explore in our, our teaching so uh, uh that's great to hear thank you talk talk Yeah, Marshall, your book is fantastic, man. Thank Actually, wait, let me animate myself a little better. Your book is fantastic, Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, it, really it is. Um, Thank you. You know, I've always been like scientifically orient, oriented and, and the subject material clicked with me quite easily, which was, which was great. But I really want to highlight a particular aspect that you know, us only like a single author could really like pull off properly. You know, if you go, if you go out there on the, on the internet, if you, and you try to like research sacred geometry or finery or, you know, holographic nature or fractals, you know, you kind of get like a really a disjointed mess of mm -hmm. information. And it's really something quite special when you have a singular point where the data is amalgamated but most importantly you're you have the consciousness that being you in this case being able to actually draw the links between the separate subjects and go right this is connected to here and this is connected to here and this ties into this and we could see this detail here and it's like right got it so dude spot on like your book is awesome. great <laughs> thank you so much i appreciate that reflection and um uh, you know, like I was saying, that has been part of my quest is to be able to show the integrated wholeness. And what really I, I know is ultimately a very simple model. Um, it can be challenging at first to get through all the parts and start to see what the parts are in their own unique aspect of that wholeness. That, like the perspectives that we're talking about to see that one thing and then when we see that all together as one thing then they all uh, you know every one of those holographic fractal the phi the harmonic nature of music uh the 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 physics they're all just one thing consciousness it's it's all just one thing really and and in that is a, is a tremendous simplicity. And it's when we orient ourselves to, to, to seeing it as all as one thing, it starts to make sense then, because until we do, and like you were saying, Octak, it's like these, these separate strands that you go look here and you look there, and then, but you don't see how they relate. But when you see that as all one thing, it actually then makes a lot more sense. Yeah, something else that you, finally you know too is people are trying to like pick one aspect of it and like uh, you know try to make like a final a final solution out mm -hmm. of it and it's like mm, you guys are like losing the exploration part of it right and you're losing but you know the perspectives are good right like you want to take the physics yeah. approach or the finary approach or you know just sacred geometry approach and and once you sort of finally get that clue you know you finally like you find a perspective that sort of oh a light bulb goes on for a moment, then suddenly all those other perspectives that you may have missed or misunderstood start to become way more clear, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can say that as well from my perspective. Like I had a general understanding of some of the, the theories of unified physics, but then when we really delved into it and explored it in a disciplined way, it forced me to look at things that maybe I didn't completely understand. And, and as Brittany was saying, it's like when something, when you focus on something, it gets bigger in your own reality. So it was like, it was like entering that dimension, which, which we're in all the time in a way, in one way, but then it's mm -hmm. like entering it from, I don't know, like the understanding of just that dimension and, and just seeing it everywhere. Like I was facilitating a ceremony a couple of weeks last week and seeing that they're more more strongly than before and uh mm. 
and working with Ayurveda as well. Ayurveda, you know, is based in the elements. So I don't know, it feels like it changed my relationship with space. Mm -hmm. Like, like the awareness that, every, you know, it's things that masters have always said that like everything is in the now, but I don't know, for some reason, the imprint really stayed with me. And, and it, I think the impression mm -hmm. here to stay. Yeah. So thank mm, you. Wonderful. As I was saying at, at, towards the beginning, um, you know, I really feel it's important that um, our minds get, have the opportunity to understand this information because it's then that the mind can relax. And, you know, by having that, that logical relationship to what we already are very much feeling and our hearts know and you know is very much the orientation of the spiritual mystic aspect oftentimes the mind is still wondering you know is this true is this real uh what, what do i do now you know or how can i get somewhere whatever it might be all these questions that can start to relax when there's a framework that the mind can settle into saying yeah i get it now okay and then we can really you know go and it sounds like you know some of your experience in ceremony is like you said your relationship to space well there's an orientation that allows your mind to actually go there also you know and have a a place uh and then let go because that that relaxation is present and it's so important so thank you for that reflection too well i would like to say um marcia that as um as a holder of this community and my choice of bringing this book into the studies of the structure of belonging, um, I noticed in the community a great lip of um, understanding their nature. And as you say to, to that they are able more to relax and realize a point mm -hmm. that they were needed to understand. So each person has kind of a different maturity point um, that this book, uh, those research have brought up, is mm -hmm. that each person have the aha point and the integration of some teachings that they were ready to be integrated, but they, they were needing that link to be integrated. So without that information, whatever they were processing to be part of their cosmetry, mm. um, were, were um, not able without your book. Mm. information that that you brought to each of us is um is very rich it's very um for the mind bending the time the space the conception of of where we are so i really um um, feel grateful that you have saved me a couple of months of uh, work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's paying off. <laughs> on time. But I'm my, time. My efforts are paying off. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and thank I thank also that. the community for responding to this challenge because um, mm -hmm. as, as through the years we have been uh, just being trained and and heavy duty uh, mysticism and shamanism and subtleness and tag, uh, you know all the the subtle science and and then i ask okay now you need to look into physics and they go yeah. oh my god <laughs> yeah how scary that is <laughs> how scary it is so thanks god we, we have up talk who facilitate a beautiful way and uh thank you Oka. Yeah, not scared from your wall. And when you said that, I was like, really? We're going to check out physics? Finally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Octoc, by the way, I've, I've been seeing this uh, double pyramid above your head. Yeah. As, as you've been speaking. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's a star tetrahedron that I just put together oh, with uh, barbecue okay. skewers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's really there. <laughs> well, I've got I've got that and like and others in my meditation room downstairs. But my my son liked that one in particular, so he we brought it upstairs. Very That's good. Great. Well, I, I anyway, I just wanna I just wanna thank you for all your work. It's is very much uh, of great contribution to this community and. Um, I look forward for further interactions and maturity in different topics and expanding the, the voice of different members that I'm sure they have um, something enlightened to say. Thank mm -hmm. you again now uh, for putting this together, uh, Matthew and Octog and all of you for, for tonight. Mm. Well, Berdania, thank you for... Um uh taking the time to look into my book and then seeing its relevance in your community um uh, i'm curious how did how did it come across your radar to begin with do you recall hmm. probably her crush on nasim haramain <laughs> uh, yeah. through through those channels talking about emails it. And, yeah okay yeah, that yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I start. I start to introduce in some of the knowledge and researching for some uh, uh, videos of physics that they could be enriching the certain topic I was yeah. teaching. So yeah, I great. Across, um, you had it right in July. Like you had it probably the same month that it was. That sounds it was like it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right away. Well, it just really means so much to me to hear um, how you all have embraced what I have to offer into your studies in Berdania that you, you felt it was of importance to your community and to hear how it is contributing to a, a growth and an evolution in ways that, um, uh, you know, are very meaningful. And, and for me, it just, it just really means everything to hear that. And it's so fulfilling and rewarding. And, I love uh, being in this conversation with you all and would be happy to do so anytime and appreciate so much all you're doing to, to uh, bring this beautiful new dream into this world, uh, which we're doing together. And Bria, thank you so much for putting out that nice little image of the book on your lap with study group. I'm like, really a study group? Wow, <laughs> I want to talk with that group of people. <laughs> That's my kin. Yeah, it's been it's been our honor, man. Yeah, well, mine as well. Mine as well. Thank you. Is is there room for like a quick little question? Can I throw you yes, a question? Of course. Um, I'm kind of curious. Um, is there any uh, Mandelbrot and complex numbers? Is there any reason you didn't touch on any of that in your book? <laughs> All right. I saw that question come in. I was like, yeah, there's another, there's somebody who's really paying attention. <laughs> well, um, so I, I've given that some thought based on Bria sending me that question. And um, <clears throat> in terms of the Mandelbrot fractals, um, you know, the, the, that kind of visual expression of the mathematics that we associate with fractals, uh, and has been very informative of at least imprinting an idea of what fractals are for people. Um, is so my orientation was to first of all to not get technical about it, um, and so to reference the mathematics are there, and that Benoit Mendelbrot conceived of and generated this mathematical model. He did so to actually answer a question about what's happening in nature when you see mountainscapes and coastlines and plant growth and clouds and, and everything. Um, and, you know, my simple definition of fractal in the book is the this, this same pattern repeats at all scales. It's as simple as that. And, uh, and I wanted people to be orienting that concept towards the experience and, and perception of nature and what's happening in nature. And so I, I pretty much wholly went in that direction and not in the mathematical 
uh, at least in terms of the study of that or the inquiry of that, um, I really wanted to be oriented towards the expression of that in nature. So I, I went more fully in that direction. Yeah, yeah, that that makes that makes sense. Uh, and I, I get it from that perspective. Uh huh. But yeah. I, I am t I am taking this group in the direction of complex numbers and mental broad in the next two weeks. So. Oh, great. Well, I could learn from you then because <laughs> complex numbers, the, the, com the complex imaginary plane, uh, I honestly don't understand them very well because like I said, I'm not that technical. Um, and so I, un what I do understand is that it's foundational to uh, an aspect of understanding the nature of information in the universe. And in my book, it's like energy, matter, and information are all, all one thing. And, um, and I personally didn't understand that aspect enough to, to try to incorporate it and do it justice appropriately. And um, I, I, one of the books I mentioned a few times is called The Cosmic Hologram by Jude Curvin. And she is a physics background. Um, and a mystical background, by the way. Very interesting, uh, like she says, walking in both worlds. And um, she's, a, she's a wonderful cosmologist and what I think would be a great person for you all to have a conversation with. Um, and she, she does talk about that in The Cosmic Hologram. And, and when I read that book, I was like, finally, somebody put out a book that really is saying from, and, and it's a really, um, comprehensive, it's comprehensively referencing scientific research and papers throughout her whole book. So it's very much um, grounded in that kind of sourcing. And yeah, she talks about that in there. Uh, so that's a good one to, to uh, yeah, get for, some of that information from. For me personally, like Mandel brought in the set and those fractals are really like the final frontier of sacred geometry so i hope mm -hmm. i hope the group hope the group um appreciates them as much as i do by the end right. by two weeks from now we'll see we'll see yeah. it, it is a, it is a bit technical it uh, it is but i believe in them so yeah well I, and and what she says and that's kind of the rounded out is that <clears throat> it's that aspect of these complex um, and imaginary numbers and and all that is the informational aspect underlying what then comes into the other the form. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And just maybe I'll throw one thing, one thing more in there. Uh, the complex number of imaginary plane, you know, if, just to quote some things from your book, you can think of that realm as uh, the multidimensional or unmanifest realm. Yeah. Like the unmanifest part of the VE, for example. Oh, okay, good. Right Perfect. on. Perfect. Love it. <laughs> Great. Well, is there any other co closing comments before we wrap up? All right. Well, thank you so much again, Marshall, for being with us. We really were really honored to have you here. It's like a miracle. <laughs> and um, if anyone wants to get a hold of you, it's I would guess the best way would be through your website, cosmometry. Sure. You can share my email address with anybody in your group as you wish. That's fine. Perfect. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And Verdania and Matthew are both reachable at Verdania.com, as you know. Um, they have an amazing program for people interested in learning more about modern mysticism called Practical Awakening, uh, as well as Verdania is soon launching a new school program platform called Evolution. Oh, excellent. Anything else about, but it's coming, so we're really excited. Right. I just ordered one of your PDFs today, and I'm looking forward to going into it more fully. Uh, been a very busy time. We didn't talk about the Thrive movie, and we could do that another time. But uh, it's exciting. Good things are happening. There's some. Yeah. What are you working on? How is fabulous. that? Fabulous. Yeah. Well, there there are some. Uh, I think you're familiar with Thrive One, and since that came out, um, there have been over a thousand people contacted Foster and Kimberly Gamble, saying they have innovations in all sorts of different fields. And so over these years, they've vetted it down to some of the most essential and actual ones. And, um, and all of them are based on everything we're talking about here. It's resonance, 
vibration frequency uh, coming into harmonic relationship, whether it's in energy generating technology or healing technologies or consciousness shifting, um, or um, even the there are aspects of the film that will go into the plant medicine shaman, shaman journey aspect of it. Um, the, you know, really the pure consciousness aspect of it. And it's all one and the same thing. And so we're going to be, um, I have the, just the dream job of working with Foster and a team of um, computer graphic artists, 3D artists to, to, to be able to visually portray the things that are in the book, you know, the, the, the geometry and dynamics of the unified field. And, uh, and that really the, the unified field is sort of the, the star of the movie and everything else is in reference to that relationship to that. And um, so it's, it's, it's just very exciting to be putting this, this picture together now for that offering into the world. Um, so that's beautiful. We'll look forward to seeing that. When is it coming out? I aiming towards spring of next year. Oh. And we're in the thick of it now. So uh, yeah, so I, I was I wanted to do some more reading of uh, your some of your books, Lordania. Uh, and so just finally, today, I was like, well, I'm going to get one of these PDFs and it didn't come in yet. But uh, I look forward to reading it very much. And yeah, okay, you'll, you'll get there. <laughs> You're getting you're getting a a, li a little. I made that um, book with the with the intent to have a an overview of of a great uh, mandala of life. So you have a little bit of resume on that. Mm. Hopefully, hopefully um, will be understandable. Oh, I look forward to taking it in, and uh, thank you for all you're bringing into our world, all of you. And thank you for having me here tonight. It's been an honor for me as well. <laughs>